Welcome to Street Startups, the innovative podcast for those who are looking to use their skills and talents to start successful businesses. Join us for each episode as we introduce you to successful community-based entrepreneurs and discuss the strategies necessary to launch your startup. Join startup strategists Tracy Syfax and CJ Meenan to learn more about what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur in your community. Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of Street Startups. I'm here, as always, with my partner, Tracy Syfax. How are you, partner? I am doing great, CJ, and and I am super excited about our guest tonight. And if you don't mind, I would love to have the opportunity to introduce our next guest. And, you know, it's it's always amazing when you can be out and about and run into your students actually with the business open, actually on the street, selling their wear. And when I walked up to Rashid the other day, he told me, he said, Tracy, this has been going great. I'm mid five figures with my business right now. And it is just awesome to hear those stories, how entrepreneurs have gone through our course, taken our course and actually applied it to their everyday lives. So Rashid, thank you. Welcome to the show. Only I would like for you to introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your business. How's it going? And then we'll kick it right off with CJ. He'll come right back to you. All right. Sounds good. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am excited to be doing this. Um, it's really cool to be chatting with two of my mentors and um, teachers who got me really to where I'm at today. So uh, my um, my business name is Ramalik Illustrations, and it's an abbreviation of my first and my middle name, so Rashad Malik Davis. Um, and so, you know, my, my work focuses on uh, education and art is kind of the crux of it. So um, one part of my income and part of my business is illustrating. So I do my own books, children's books for um, for kids and then uh, comics for young adults and adults as well. And then the other aspect of it is education. So I'm teaching children, young adults and adults um, concepts of art. So illustration, um, animation, how to make our characters move, and then also graphic novels. So how to create um, sequential stories in visual format. So it's just a lot of art, a lot of creativity, and um, I'm happy to be here. That's awesome. Thank you, Rashad. So listen, let's just jump right in. We work with so many creative folks, maybe not as creative of you, but close, right? So the, the challenge always is working with creative people, especially artists, is so, so you all create this beautiful thing, right? It's a work of art, it's a work of music, it's a piece of clothing, whatever it is. And then the challenge is, well, what do I do with this next? Like, what's the what's the actual value of this in the marketplace, right? I, I know I love it, I know it speaks to me, but then how do I turn this into a business? Can you describe a little bit of the process that you went through taking your talents and, and turning them into a business? For sure. Um, so, you know, I, I say this to my students uh, whenever I do school visits, and I, I, I like to call the pieces of us that become our business uh, the building blocks. So for me, I had certain key characteristics that I realized later in life could be marketable. So one, I was very... Um, emotional and very uh, aware of my feelings and very sensitive to other people. Um, I realized that I love storytelling. I love visual art um, and I love to connect. And so as I got older and after I graduated from college, I was really struggling with what I wanted to do, but I realized that I could kind of combine those things into a working business. So I started in like 2013, just putting it on Facebook saying like, hey, I am a freelance illustrator and got hired for my first gig. And from there, I really started to build on it. But it wasn't until um, I met you all that I could kind of structure it in a real way and say like, let me look at the numbers and let me look at um, the practical things that I can do to build this. So, you know, I started out with illustration but then I realized I wasn't I wasn't able to produce fast enough um, in order to make a living off of that. Um, and so it was from there that I said, OK, how how else can I leverage my skills um, as a people person and somebody who enjoys people to then make money? And I was like, oh, yeah, teaching. Um, <laughs> I, I realized that I wasn't 
good at a nine to five situation. And I said, okay, what if I work for an hour a day, two hours a day teaching and then charge a certain amount and then do that across multiple schools to make up my income. And then that's where the bulk of my money started coming in is when I did that. And marketing, um, a very specific skill in animation that most people don't have. So I could kind of like keep people out of the uh, out of the competitive sphere with me. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, I know when you talk about money coming in, Tracy's got a question about, about that. That gets him fired up for sure. Tracy, go ahead. Well, we lost you, Tracy. I think you you popped on mute again. Uh, yeah, no problem. You know, we, we always say it all, all the time, CJ. Doesn't nothing happen until a sale is made. Until right. money actually exchange hands. And until that happens, nothing's nothing, nothing is nothing is it's just it's just a hobby. So I I, I thank you, Mr. Shea. And even you talk a little bit about social media too. So let me just drill down on that because <laughs> I had opportunity when I came back home from the um uh, from the event. I said, let me go check out his page, his social media page. And me and CJ have this conversation with our students all about. When we go to your page, we should be able to tell that you're in business and that you're an artist. Mm. And when I went to your page, I knew you was in business and I <laughs> knew you was an artist. <laughs> so, but once again, you know, that is a free opportunity to use social media as that tool. To 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 get our, our 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 product into the market and to get our, our our stuff out there where it doesn't cost us anything. How have you really mastered that social media concept in re in reference to using that to really display your products where people know exactly what you do? Yeah. Um. So you know, I I think uh, truthfully, I I so, social media isn't my favorite. Like I don't sit down and go, man, I can't wait to post something and take up 30 <laughs> minutes of my day, you know, but I, I, I realized that in order for people to really become um, interested in, interested in my product, they had to become interested in me. So, mm -hmm. you know, I noticed that the posts that had the most engagement aren't even necessarily the art pieces. It's when people are understanding who I am. So I, I try to stay consistent across my brand with a few things, which is um, it's diversity, it's positivity, and um, it's uh, creativity. So I try to maintain those three things in each post I make. Mm -hmm. um, and, if it, and if it doesn't really fit with the brand, I won't share it. Um, or I'll share it on social media that's not related to my art. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always interacting with, with other artists, other creators, seeing what they're doing. And that's, that, to me, is the biggest benefit of social media, mm -hmm. is seeing what other artists are doing and realizing what's working for them and basically, like, co-opting it for myself. So social media is, like, fun, and it's also very effective for me. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. CJ? Brilliant. Brilliant. You mentioned the three pillars of your brand. Uh, diversity, positivity, and creativity. I would challenge our listeners right now, uh, think through what are the pillars of your brand? And can you, exp can you express them as quickly and as easily as, as Rashad did? Rashad, tell us a little bit about that process of going from the freelance artist or the illustrator into creating your brand. What, mm -hmm. what was that journey like? Yeah, so um, g going from just an artist who is taking jobs just to make money to then branding myself, it it really meant um, knowing myself. I think that I think that was the big first step was identifying who I was and taking the time to say, "Am I an artist who's edgy? Am I an artist who's um, you know kind of like a revolutionary artist? Am I somebody who's a lot more easygoing? Like who who am I?" Um, and once I was able to establish who I am and what my morals and values were, then it became easier to establish a brand. So I started seeking out work that fit with um, the brand. Uh, what, what I started to seek out work that was consistent with my brand. And I push out things that are only consistent with my brand. Like I, I branch out and do different media and do different things to keep it fresh for people, but I always stick within um, my parameters so that my audience feels comfortable um, with the produce with the work that I produce, but they're also not bored. Brilliant, brilliant, Tracy. 
let's talk. That's good stuff, H. Let's talk a little bit about, and this is this this happens to every entrepreneur. I don't know an entrepreneur that hasn't gone through it. I don't know a, a, a famous basketball player, famous boxer, famous sports anybody that hasn't had to go through this and have to have to conquer this in order to be successful. And that's fear. Mm. That's fear. How did you get over any fears that you had about business, about any hesitation that you may have had that you can actually not only do this mm. because, you know, I asked you, I had to ask you, are you working part time? Are you working full time and doing this? <laughs> Are you a full-fledged entrepreneur? You said, Tracy, I'm a full-fledged entrepreneur. Right. How did you how did you make that transition? Was there any feel, any fear? I mean, in, in doing that, how did you make that transition? Yeah, no, th th there was so much fear. Like I, I was um I, I was terrified. I, you know, th there, there's the idea of the starving artist, and you know, I like to eat, so I was like, there is no way. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that I'm trying to be starving, um, and 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 you know it was it was it was mainly my own insecurities about was I good enough to do it, to do this? Was I smart enough? Was I uh, creative or artistic enough? And really, what kind of pushed me was I think two things. So at the time when I when I decided to pursue art seriously, I was just going through a really tough time in my life personally, mm -hmm. and I had to make the decision. For myself, like, am I going to remain a victim to my circumstances or am I going to make change um, and do something that fulfilled me? And I decided, you know, to do the latter. Um, but then also on a kind of like just more direct note, I had tried every other job I possibly could. You know, <laughs> I I worked um, I worked corporate. I worked as a gardener for like a month. Like I, I was doing everything I possibly could to feel complete within myself and everything, like nothing fit. Um, mm -hmm. And eventually I had to kind of return back to those building blocks, which were art, which were art being sensitive, um, being a storyteller. And I found once I was able to sit comfortably in that, um, the fear never left and it doesn't, you know, um, I'm always like, oh my God, am I gonna make enough money next year? But you know, like what drives me is the fact that I can't go back, I'll be miserable. And two, um, <laughs> and two, like I like this, like this is a part of me. This is who I am. So I, there's nothing else I can really do that would make me feel good about myself and my life. Wow, that's good stuff. That's that's excellent. I love it. I love it. Thank you, mm. Rashad. You're really touching on so many. You're giving us a master class, really, on how <laughs> the entrepreneur takes their own gifts and talents and then applies them in the marketplace to meet wants and needs that mm -hmm. that the customers have and and so you you are holy smokes you are a perfect example of that happening mm -hmm. i love it i love it you know Thank so many you. people ask us well how do you know you know businesses are going to be successful that's the formula right there that you described yeah. when mm -hmm. you can find your passion and and help solve a need that customers have you're you're golden you're golden mm -hmm. so you know, what's next? It sounds like here's what I here's the other part I love that I think our listeners need to know is that there's no finish line, right? You you not not just on the stress level, but I'm talking on your creativity side. Now you're going into animation, you're going into you're bringing technology in. How does that how does that work as you start to say, OK, here are some tools I'm going to use them. Then how do you turn that into something that you're you're selling in the marketplace? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I think you know what's what's kind of coming up next, and um, what I'm what I'm realizing is that like with, with with technology, it's it's really amazing because I I think that people are realizing that technology isn't like the big bad. It's some it's it's just a tool that we can use to make our lives better. So what, I, what I'm trying to leverage is that understanding for families and kids. So I'm always pushing to parents like, hey, the next, the next step in, in art is really utilizing tech. Like we have to use tech. And so I'm always pushing that um, onto families and being like, hey, like if you want your kids to be current and they want to pursue art, they should know this. Um, because this is what's happening in the studios and what's happening in the professional world is the leverage of tech. Um, but I, I think what's next as far as like what's coming for me is uh, trying to figure out how does this expand? 
Um, so I want to I want to ultimately move into animation and and make animated films with my stories. That's the next step. Um, but in the meantime, I'm trying to figure out how do I expand with the education part because I'm only one person. I can't stretch myself so far. So I'm like, do I start to work with other people and start to hire like an education troupe and just hire people out to teach elsewhere um, that can kind of copy that brand? Or um, do I focus on more of the art and the storytelling and trying to make more money with that and selling it to big names and whoever else can pick it up? So yeah, I think that's the next step is figuring out like which 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 arena do I expand in um, and then go from there. Excellent, thank you. Tracy, what you got? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's good stuff, man. And I think your plan to, to um to scale the business. Uh, me and CJ have this conversation all, all the time. And I think I may have had this conversation inside the class, how you bring in other subcontractors and other partners in order to scale and do a lot of the stuff that you want to do. Even when I was in the construction business, I tell people all the time, I'm a roofer. You don't want me to do your kitchen and you don't want me to do your bath. I'm a roofer. Yeah, I mean, so, but I built a, a, a reputable company on doing kitchens and bath because I partnered with so many great subcontractors mm -hmm. where that was their expertise. So your your whole vision of how you scale your business is right where it needs to be, Rashawn. I just looking forward to the future for you to thank see you. many great things that you do with your uh, with your business. So thank you. Thank you again, once again, for coming on board. And I'm going to turn it back over to CJ for the last word. Excellent. Rashad, thank you so much for being here. I love your message. I love the self-examination, the, the journey that you went on to find yourself first mm -hmm. and then share yourself with the word, uh, with the world. Give us a give us a final tip to that young entrepreneur out there that's about to walk that path. What piece mm -hmm. of advice would you would you give them? That's a tough one. Um <laughs> Take CJ and Tracy class. No, I'm right, sorry. right. No, basically take <laughs> their class. It is so good. They're, they're dynamic yeah, educators. We didn't plan that. And they give you good stuff. <laughs> no, um, good. But I, I think aside from taking your class, I think what I would say is um, be be specific. Um, I think that has been the most radical transformation for me is um, know yourself deeply and know what it is that lights you up so that you can pinpoint and target that thing. Um, I think that's been the most transformational part of your class um, and understanding who I am. And uh, I think that's been the, the thing that's catapulted me in the, in the most recent years is just getting laser focused and knowing what I want, knowing who I am, and knowing where to go from there. Excellent. Rashad, where do people find your work? How can how can they check you out? Yes. So you can find my work on Instagram. So it'll be Ramalik, and that's R-A-M-A-L-I-K underscore illustrations with an S at the end. Um, and my website is the exact same thing. So www.ramalikillustrations.com. Um, and you can find my artwork, you can find my teaching stuff and everything else there. Rashad, thank you once again for sharing those those inside tips with us. Uh, Tracy, thank you as always for being on point. And folks, remember, find yourself first and then be specific in the marketplace. We will see you next time on Street Startups. Peace. We're taking it to the streets from New York to California. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of Street Startups Podcast and visit us at streetstartups.live.